In 2019, at Tesla's Autonomy Day for investors, Elon Musk made a bold declaration. LiDAR is, is a fool's errand, and, any, and anyone relying on LiDAR is doomed. For context, LiDAR is a type of object detection sensor, and it's used by almost every manufacturer that's developing a self-driving car. Every manufacturer, that is, except Tesla. But just six months ago, this video was released showing a Tesla Model 3 barreling straight into a completely stationary overturned semi-truck. The driver wasn't harmed, but claimed that the car was in autopilot before and during the crash. So why did the Tesla fail to detect the semi-truck? How does an autonomous vehicle actually see the world around us? And would a car using LiDAR sensors, the sensors that Mr. Musk called a fool's errand, have been more likely to avoid the same crash? We're gonna get into it. Let's go. Thanks to Amaze for sponsoring this week's episode of Bumper to Bumper. Not, not yet, Doug, not yet. Next week. Love you though, you're my homie. If you guys couldn't tell already, we love teaming up with Omaze because they give you, the fans, chances to win once in a lifetime dream cars, all while supporting amazing causes like the Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center. The same place that saved our very own Kentucky Cobra, Mr. James Pumphrey's life. So we love them over there. The cars that Omaze offer are sick. I'm talking about Porsche Cayenne GTS Coupe, a Ford F-250 that's fully customized by LGE CTS. And how about this sweet Dodge Demon? And you could win. Just ask Sebastian who won the Corvette Stingray we helped Omaze give away earlier this year. Hey Sebastian. So don't miss out on the chance to win your dream car and support a great cause at the same time. Head on over to omaze.com slash cars to check out some of the sickest cars. And while you're there, make a donation because who knows, you can win the car of your dreams. Now let's get back to some B2B. There are four main sensors that autonomous cars use to detect and analyze their surroundings. So before we dive into exactly what might have caused a Tesla accident, we need to understand how each of these sensors work. Probably the most common object detecting sensor found in cars today is the ultrasonic sensor. Now these sensors work by emitting a pulse of sound waves and measuring the time it takes for that pulse to reflect back off an object and return to the sensor. The more time it takes for the sound to return, the further away the object is. It's literally how bats work. We of course don't hear these sound waves because they're outside of the human's audible spectrum. In ultrasonic sensors, they're cheap and often reliable, so it's probably the first type of detection system you would opt for if you were building a car. However, they do have one major drawback. They don't have a very long range. The reason sonar is so popular for marine applications is because sound travels much more effectively through water than it does through air. It's like this line of pool balls. If they're tightly packed together like water molecules, when you hit the ball on one end, that energy is quickly and efficiently transferred to the ball on the opposite end. However, if you space them out like molecules in air, when you try the same thing, that energy is quickly dispersed. The energy from our initial hit can't travel very far. For this reason, ultrasonic sensors are most useful for detecting objects within about three meters of the car. Great for parking, blind spot detection, and understanding immediate surroundings, but not so great for seeing a car slam on its brakes 100 meters in front of you. If only there was something like ultrasonics, but instead of sound, it used a signal that could travel through air over further distances. Hello? It's called radar? Oh, thanks, Mom. Radar or radio detection and ranging works a lot like ultrasonic sensors, but they use radio waves in place of sound waves. Because radio waves have long wavelengths, they can cut through fog, dust, and rain with little interference, allowing radar systems to work no matter the weather conditions. Now, the systems are a bit more expensive than ultrasonics, but they can detect objects from a very far distance, which is why you'll usually see them on the front of cars detecting objects further down the road. Radar is great at determining an object's location and velocity, but it's not the most accurate in determining its size or composition. Because of the nature of radio waves, something highly reflective and small, like an aluminum can, can generate a similar signal to something larger, but not so bright, like your mom. A radar sensor can be like, hey, there's something over there, or oh, there's something over there, something down there. But it can never be like, hey, that's a car, that's a guy on a bike. It's just not possible. Radar just doesn't have the resolution to differentiate objects to that level of accuracy. If only 
there was a system like radar that used such precise signals of electromagnetic waves that it could recreate an accurate three-dimensional reading of its entire surroundings. Uh, hello? My insurance rates are about to go up? That's a scam. I don't have insurance. Thought that was gonna be my mom, huh? Well, luckily, there is a system that does just that. LiDAR. LiDAR is a combination of the words light and radar, but it is now also accepted to mean light detection and ranging. It basically substitutes the radio waves of radar with lasers. lasers. Yeah, like actual lasers, for real. The LiDAR sensor usually sits on the roof of the vehicle and it emits millions of pulses of light in a radial pattern to build a 3D model of its surroundings. And this high resolution model can help decipher objects in a way that would be impossible with radar systems. So while a radar or ultrasonic system can recognize that there's an object alongside you, a LiDAR system can recognize that it's a motorcycle and whether or not the rider is even wearing a helmet. However, because the lasers must use electromagnetic waves with shorter wavelengths, the light can't cut through things like heavy fog or rain. I also have to say, they kind of look pretty ugly on top of car. I mean, I don't know if you've seen them, but they're an expensive sensor that is not pretty to look at. Kind of look pretty ugly on top of car. They're an expensive sensor that is not pretty to look at. But probably the biggest drawback of all three of these systems so far is that they can't actually see anything. If your car is going to drive itself, it needs to be able to read signs and tell if a light is red or green. If only there could be some sort of device that could... Hello? What are you talking to right now? Well, I'm talking to you. No, not me. What are you talking to right now? Well, I guess I'm talking to a video camera. Oh, there you go. Oh my gosh, how are we related? That was good, Uncle Jerry. Yeah, thanks for that. Okay, bye. Cameras. Almost every autonomous vehicle integrates some sort of camera system. The reason cameras are so useful is that they are very similar to the human eye, which is what our current road network is built around. We don't use sound to tell us when to yield. We don't use radio waves to indicate where the turning lane is. And we don't use different 3D shapes to tell us when a light is about to turn red. And because of this, cameras are the first step when it comes to seeing our road systems in a very human way. A computer can use camera footage to detect lane lines, street signs, and if it's smart enough, just about anything else. But getting from a 2D image to a 3D interpretation takes a lot of work. Remember, an image has no three-dimensional data on its own. However, there are a couple tricks we can use to get us some three-dimensional data out of a bunch of two-dimensional images. So look at these two images. They were both taken by two cameras offset from each other by one meter. And notice as we switch between the two images that the objects in the foreground move more than the objects in the background. This is called stereo vision, and it's how humans use both of our eyes to perceive depth. And it also shows how autonomous cars with multiple cameras can tell how far away an object is. Now look at these two images. These were taken by the same camera. However, in the second image, the camera has moved forward a bit. Notice how objects closer to the camera once again moved a greater distance than the objects further away. Well, this form of linear perspective can be used by a single camera as it travels through space. But these tricks alone can only get you so far. They won't help you read a street sign or tell the difference between a plastic bag and a tire, which is, I guess, a common problem in autonomous cars. Making those types of interpretations requires something you've probably heard of called machine learning. Now, we don't have enough time to get into the nitty gritty of how machine learning works, but it allows a computer program to learn and evolve over time. And if you've ever wondered why those little CAPTCHA tests always involve street signs and different types of vehicles, it's because you're helping train these AI systems. Freaking stealing your data, dude, and you didn't even know it. I honestly just found out about this. <laughs> the fact that camera systems rely so heavily on machine learning and are more difficult for computers to analyze in general is where the whole debate between LiDAR and cameras really kick off and where Tesla and seemingly everyone else disagree. A LiDAR sensor, it generates data that doesn't require a ton of interpretation to be useful. It immediately can inform the car's computer of an object's size and distance right off the bat. 
And because of this, most autonomous cars developed are using LiDAR as their primary means to interpret the car's surrounding and hope to rely on the cameras only to interpret signs, lane markers, and traffic signals. Now, Elon Musk, it, on the other hand, he's banking that with machine learning, the car's cameras can essentially do most of the heavy lifting with some radar and ultrasonic sensors to help with general surroundings. It seems like his belief is that we are trying to replace human drivers who have two eyes and a brain, so we might as well use the technological equivalent of two cameras and a neural network. So back to that accident that we talked about in the intro. Why did this Tesla crash? And if it had a LiDAR system, would it have stopped in time? So the car in question here is a Tesla Model 3 and it has 12 ultrasonic sensors, eight cameras, and one forward-facing radar system. With a range of 160 meters, it is unlikely that the forward-facing radar failed to produce a detection. The issue was more related to how the computer interpreted that detection. Cars using radars have some issues with stationary objects. One theory suggests this is because we fly past stationary objects on the freeway all the time. Usually they're side barricades or overpasses or signs. So the car's computer might have interpreted the overturned truck as consistent with one of these common unmoving objects. I mean, I can see how with the low resolution of radar, that truck would generate a signal similar to an overpass. But as long as you have another reliable system to cross-reference, the computer should be able to determine if the approaching object has the potential for collision. And in this case, that system should have been the car's cameras. So why didn't Tesla's computer analyze the camera footage and realize that there was an overturned semi-truck in the road? That's the million dollar question and I can't tell you. Maybe it just hadn't been trained in many situations that involved an overturned truck. So it couldn't make sense of what it was seeing. Now Tesla had been using a system that more precisely detected objects like LiDAR. Might it have been able to tell that the motionless object was actually a threat? I think so. LiDAR is pretty freaking good. There's a reason people are using it. But I really hate to make any of this sound like Tesla's fault. When you're in autopilot mode, you're supposed to still have your eyes on the road. And there are way more videos out there of self-driving cars actually saving people from accidents than there are of these very rare hiccups. So I think it's up in the air whether LiDAR will come out on top or whether machine learning will advance enough that just a couple of cameras and a powerful computer will be able to navigate any road or scenario you throw at it. It's like iPod for Zoom, Zoom. <laughs> So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of B2B. You can follow us on Instagram here at Donut, all the donut guys, all the donut fun, at Donut Media. You can follow me on Instagram at Jeremiah Burton. If there's a topic you guys are interested in that you want to see here on B2B, put a comment down below. We'll see if we can, we can make it happen, Captain. And until then, bye for now. <laughs>